Howdy y'all, Nurse Dude back. Off shift, and unfortunately, I got a little bit of a frog voice, so don't mind me with my tea here. I'm trying to get back around. I did a lot of talking this week. But I have a new thing for you, night vision-wise. I have a Noise Fighters AX14 Pro arm, which I thought I might share with you as for an upgrade from my original arm, which did me very well. But there's a few things, changes, I'd like to share with you and kind of go... A little bit more in detail of some of the design stuff that they changed and how I think it's a far better design. So I got this in the mail today when I came home from work, took a bit of a nap and came back around and now we're looking at it. Oh, the box, first of all. I like the little jewelry box style that they put it in. Makes it nice, put your cool stuff in there. So with this, again, it's a normal dovetail attachment point. So um, you can get your attachment from, I believe it's a mod armory to be able to attach it to the rhinos and or the other type of stuff. So that way you can convert it from the bayonet mount to the rhino mount. But so overall, the design of it is really similar. It's both a single PVS-14 arm that you can turn around and manipulate as, as, as that you need. Um, one of the big ones that I've noticed is the fact that the arm itself is a little bit more beefy. It's definitely not quite as small as it used to be. A little bit different design in the joint and then in the uh, mount body itself, it's a little bit different too. And some little tiny bits down at the bottom. So we'll kind of do a little bit of a, take them apart. I'll show you the differences and kind of see the key features that I see as comparatively. So let's look at the original one first. I'll set the old one aside. Um, one of the things that I noticed right away about the original one was that it had two different size I'll get a pointer here for you. Two different size Allen, Allen keys. So here's one for a socket head cap that is a larger size. And on the back here, we have one for a smaller size. So that was kind of annoying in the fact that I needed two different Allen keys to be able to adjust everything. Although one thing that was nice is that this Allen key also was the same size Allen key to adjust some stuff on my helmet. So that was somewhat of an okay deal. And then secondly the nut in the back was not captured. So if you can see down there, it is just a pier hole, and then the non-locking nut would pop out really easily, and so you could lose it if it potentially became loose. And same thing up here, well this one, while that one's a nylock nut, you can still potentially unscrew it here, and then if you were not careful, you could potentially pop it out. So that was one thing that I definitely didn't necessarily like, and I thought that it could be designed better. So here, we'll pop it out. So we'll just pop out if you pull it and push it a little bit. And that's one thing that I found that was maybe a little bit risky, but maybe not. So that was the original one. And then the normal attachment point to a PVS-14 with just the large screw. And then it came into the bayonet lug area on here. I think that was the uh, centerpiece for the bayonet so that way it wouldn't torque on you. So that was the original one. And then if I'm not mistaken, a little while after they came out with a really limited time and adapter so that we could have a dog leg on it so it would pop back a little bit further. So that was really nice for me because I kind of have a funky shaped head. So having that a little bit of an extra adjustment was really nice. So that was the original. And we'll set this aside so that way we can put it up here and then we can compare it really quick to the new one. So the new one is a little beefier in the design, has some lightning cuts on it. Um, the joint right here is a little bit different shaped. Um, if you notice that the stop for the joint is built into the arm up here and connects on that part of the arm for the stop versus down here at the bottom was the original joints design. So it was a little different. I don't know if it's necessarily better or worse, but the reason why they did it that way, we'll take it apart here, if I can get it to pop. And that's one other thing is that this is a lot tighter as far as the tension on the screws because we take it apart here. They have some flat washers. So that way you're having the friction against the printed material and the flat washer versus material and material there's a lock nut hiding in there, which is really nice. And I don't know if you can quite see, it's captured. So when we put it together, we stick that in there and it has a corresponding hole that matches up to the, um, to the faces of the nut. If I can get my fat fingers to align it right. 
and so it's captured, which is really nice. So that way it stays in there. As you can see, I can't quite get it out as easily. So a nylock nut, really nice. And then on top of that, instead of having this really tiny little screw that's a pan head, it has a countersunk screw. So you get a little bit more surface area contact there to make it tighter. So that's really nice. And then the second part up here is that again, this is the same size screw. So you only need one Allen key to be able to pop it open. And again, it's nice and tight because of the fact that it is captured also, as you can see from it hiding up there. This guy is really nice and tight for the tension. And at a benefit, it's the same screw. So we get the same exact screw for both mounting points and the same washers on each face too. So that way we have like hardware all the way around, which is really nice. And the design is a little bit beefier as far as the joint itself. Um, I think that this might potentially run into a risk of being overclocked because it doesn't quite have the same joint stoppages here. As you can see, there's a flat face right there and then the arm stops itself. But in all realities, um, these are technically sacrificial parts because if you break this, you're not breaking this or you're not breaking this on your helmet. So ultimately, I would rather break this $150 3D printed or plastic extruded piece than breaking my $4,000, $5,000, $10,000 night vision or potentially my two to $300 mount to be able to compare the two so sacrificial part definitely not sacrificial so that's how that works out and then as far as the mount to the pvs 14 itself now that you have these two corresponding um, tabs that lock into the auto on off shut part of the pvs 14 so it adds you guys can see the the matching parts there so it adds a little bit of extra torque resistant comparatively to it. So let's get my trusty penny out here and we can put this together really quick for just the lower part of the arm. So that way we can show you that it does have a lot less torque compared to the original one um, for the... So once it's locked in, it's a lot tighter comparatively to the old one. Pull it out really quick. And yes, I use a penny. It's a lot easier, they're easier to find. Typically, you can have one in a pocket and you won't lose it. I like putting tape on it so that way it's a little easier to grab. Then you can screw in the original one and you can see there's a lot more play in it. I might be over exaggerating. Now, there we go. So there's a lot more play in the original arm. So uh, I have yet to really play around with it other than the initial tabletop, but I think the design is a lot better thought out. Just the overall features that it um, that it encompasses it's just little things that make the quality of the product better like they did a countersink right there for the washers to sit into which i think is really clever and really nice here we'll put it together again really quick so there i have my washer a um, nut down there that is countersunk get this lined up in there since my screws are exactly the same it doesn't matter which one i grab Screw this guy back in and I always don't over torque these because little tiny screws stripped out really sucks because you can't really fix them because they're stripped out. So there's that. The tension on it is really nice and smooth. It doesn't really jump too much, which I found that was a problem with the old arm is that it would kind of like jerk. Oh, we forgot our captured nut. It would kind of jerk back and forth as I tightened it. So definitely an improvement there much smoother and i think that's due to the differential in the friction coefficient between the plastic and the steel versus plastic on plastic where it most likely would grab and jump as opposed to the steel itself that is a lot smoother so we'll tighten this down and i notice that you can put a lot more tension on this because of the fact that it is so that's nice and smooth there and then we'll tighten up this one really quick and i can show you that it would Kind of jump around as I was trying to torque it and tighten it. So there's that part. And you can see already that assembling the old one, there's a lot smaller pieces and they're a lot, I think, more delicate overall. So we'll tighten this one. As you can see, that it was, yeah, it's kind of not nearly as smooth. 
So overall, I really like these products. And as we've talked about before, I like my 3D printed doodads. So I'll let you guys know how it goes around. Um, overall design features, I really like it a lot better. I think it's a little bit um, smarter design second time around, a little bit beefier. You can tell that they kind of thought out a few of the features a little bit better. So hope you guys enjoyed that and I will talk to you guys later.